Hi everyone, Terry from Introverted Games here, and today we're going to go over two main concepts in this video. The first concept is, how in the hay do I persist data from scene to scene? Meaning, I have a score, and it's working great in level one, but when I go to level two, it's not working anymore. How do I fix that? All right, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And the other thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to instantiate or spawn your player into each scene as you change. There's many ways to do this, and I get asked this question a lot. Should I keep a new copy of my player in every scene? Should I spawn my player in? What should I do? Well, I'm gonna show you a solution for that as well. So, without further ado, Let's get cracking. I suppose the best place to start is to show a common problem that a lot of indie game developers have either had in the past or they currently have. You have this beautiful game that you've built. You're playing around, everything's working. You've got this little UI, you know, your score's adding up everything looks great and then you hit your portal to your next level and boom your score is gone you're defeated you're like what the hey oh, you want to throw the towel in you're irritated right well don't worry the fix is really 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 simple when you see this you're probably gonna scream all right let me show you how to do this we're going to go into our scripts folder or wherever you keep your scripts. I don't judge. They could be in your backpack for all I know, right? Okay, we're going to make a new C sharp script and I'm going to call it game data. You can call this script anything you like. This is your game. It's your private universe. Who am I to tell you what to name your script? You can call it Pink Panther, I don't care. But just know that this script is going to handle saved data. Now, you're probably used to making all mono behaviors, but this script is not going to be a mono behavior. We're not going to inherit from the Unity engine or any of that business. This is just a C-sharp script, and we're gonna make it a public, static class called game data. Now inside of this public static class, we need to make a public static integer, but this could be a vector three, a float, uh, a string. You can save any data in here you like. This is just for intents and purposes of this tutorial. So public static int, and we're gonna call it, heck, score, right? That works for me. And we need to do a git and a set. Now, if you don't know what any of this means, let me explain it to you real quick. Public static class can be accessed from anywhere. Now, l l let me show you the difference if I can find one. Okay, well, you know, right here, we're doing git component. Gosh, it's so hard to find an example when you want to. But just suffice to say that this way we don't have to get a reference, okay? We, we automatically always can access this script from anywhere in the game without first getting a reference. And the same thing goes for this public static integer of score. Do not make this private because you won't be able to access it and this won't work. Now, believe it or not, the save system is done. This is it. This is all you need. You, you could, of course, add more things like, you know, uh, public string, oops, string, oh, public static string, oops. <laughs> and we could call this player name and we could do a get and a set. You see, you see what I'm saying here? But your save system is finished well your poor man's database <laughs> is finished this is this is a great way all right now what we're gonna do is go over to UI score this is just the script I set up 
that handles the visual representation of the data that we're managing. Uh, in layman's terms, it adds a number on the canvas when you get more score. When you collect an item, it increments up. So we're gonna go, we're gonna make a start function to begin with because we don't have that yet. Okay, and down here, we are going to save some data. Now, are you ready to have your mind blown? Watch how easy it is to save data with this system. This is fantastic. Okay, please give me a like and a subscribe. You want to see more videos like this for sure. Okay, we're gonna go game data because that is the public static class that we made. We're gonna go dot and we're gonna say score and we're gonna increment it based on the incoming integer that we have for the function. And you don't want to do equals, guys. If you put an equals here, then your score is always going to be like 10. It'll never increment up. You have to add. So plus equals will add this to the score every time this function is run. It will add more to the score. Capiche? Okay. Now, there's one more thing we want to do because having the score is fine and dandy, but we have to see the score. We're humans. We're visual creatures, right? This is very simple. You're gonna hate me probably. <laughs> so score text dot text, and that's just the text mesh pro object I have in my canvas. And we're gonna say equals game data, not game object. Come on now, work with me here. Game data dot score. And um, we do wanna go to string, and that's because while it may work, you don't really want to put a string value into an integer slot or an integer value into a string slot. That's akin to trying to cram a, scround, a, blah, 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 <laughs> a square peg into a round hole. Now, you hit it enough times, it's going to go in, but it's not a good fit. And you really should just put the round peg in the round hole, meaning put the string data into the string slot. Okay, there we go. Now that is done. We now have data that persists in between scenes. It's that easy. That's all you have to do. Let me show you with a brief demonstration of our beautiful caveman game here. <laughs> in all reality, I made this game in about yeah, two hours or so. All right, we're going to run over here. We're going to collect some stuff. Boom, boom, boom. 20, 30. We're doing great, We're getting all the meats. There's 40. Jump down here, hop onto our little teleporter. Boom. And look at that. We have 40 points in our score. And we're going to do it again. 50. Uh, 60, 70. Hop on the teleporter. And we have 70. Isn't that fantastic how beautiful that is? It's so easy. Now, I do want to show you one more thing. Now, if I hit stop, you'll see there's no player in the scene. There's several ways to tackle this problem. Yes, you can put a prefab of your player in every scene if you want to. I prefer to instantiate or spawn my player into every scene as I go to each scene. Let me kind of explain that to you a little bit. Here in my player start point, I have a player spawn point. Now, all this is is an empty game object. See, there's nothing on it. It's just empty. And what I want it for is the transform. This is the position that I'm going to spawn my player in in the scene. So wherever I put that, that's where my player is going to spawn in on this particular scene when this scene starts. Now I have a level manager. Um, I probably shouldn't have put the player spawning in the level manager. Whatever. This is a beginner tutorial. <laughs> okay. Now I have a spot here for player prefab and a spot here for spawn position. Now also I use Sin Machine or Sign Machine, Cine Machine, whatever for my camera. It's a fantastic camera. You don't have to use it. But if you do, you're going to want a spot for that too. And you're also going to want an integer for what scene to load. Now I'm going to show you this script. I'm going to show you how it works. Because if you ask me, 
this is nice to have. So level manager, you see here, I, I put tool tips in my scripts. You do whatever you like, but in my opinion, tool tips are nice. These are all those things I was telling you about in the inspector. Now on enable, <clears throat> we're just subscribing to when the player dies. So that's not really pertinent for this uh, tutorial, okay? Um, but my level trigger, there is an event there called win condition, and that's how I'm triggering my level manager to change levels. That's also not important for what we're talking about. What is important is the start function. Now you see here I have a vector 3, I've called it position, and I've given it our spawn position dot position. Spawn position is just a transform that we drug that we drag we dragged in from the inspector. Okay. <clears throat> now the reason I introduced a variable here is so I don't have to put spawn position dot x, spawn position dot y. This is more performant. Okay, so I say that this vector three equals spawn position dot position. And then I say I make a new vector three called spawn location, and I'm assigning it the x, y, and z values of my transform I drag I drug in. Now this is important. You have to make a new vector three. Don't ask me why. This you just have to. Okay. And then what we do is we say var player, which is a game object. Now here. I use var, you may not use var. Let me show you how this is done the other way around. Just so you don't get confused, I'll show you both ways. So we could say, um, uh, actually no, I can't, I can't. I don't even know how to do it the other way anymore. It's been so long, <laughs> but this code works. VAR is performant. VAR works. And, and really, it's just saying this is a vector 3. So I guess I could say new vector 3 test. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You go vector 3 test equals new vector 3. So <clears throat> when I say VAR spawn location equals new vector 3, it's the same thing as saying vector three test equals new vector three. So instead of saying, you know, it's the same thing. If you're not understanding, it's the same thing with the player here. So instead of saying var player game, I could say um, game object player equals new game object. Okay. So if you don't understand my code, that's just what it means. It's just written differently. So let's stop ranting and get back to it. So I have my player game object and I'm telling it this game object equals instantiate player prefab. Now player prefab is this game object right here. The player prefab you want to spawn. Okay. Now spawn location is of course the location. And then quaternion.identity just tells it to use the current rotation of the prefab. It works this way. You don't have to set any oil or angles or anything. This just works. Okay. And then because I use sin machine, I have to tell it player camera dot follow this transform. Otherwise the camera won't follow my player. Um, I hope that you followed along with this. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to just explain how it works. This is how I spawn my players in, in every scene. It, it's, it's better this way, if you ask me. And this way you don't need, say, a don't destroy on load and blah, blah, blah. This is just easier. So feel free and copy the code if you want. It works really well. And that's an added bonus I'm going to give you in this video. All right, guys, that's pretty much everything. Uh, it's on you now. Go out there and make something beautiful. If you have any comments, if you totally hate my videos, if you have a suggestion for another video, drop me something down below. I appreciate you guys. Until next time, happy coding.